Drawing trees is a difficult task, to say the least. Not only because they're all so intricate, but also due to the sheer variety of shapes, colours, forms and designs they can exhibit. In this video, I'll show you how to draw pixel art trees so you can fill your games, landscapes and virtual gardens with some nice looking foliage. Let's get started. In nature, the trunk of the tree is the support, and so it's the aspect that shapes the overall structure the most. Some trees will just have small rectangular stumps, whereas others may have more exposed winding trunks, and it depends on the type of tree. So don't be afraid to use a variety of references when blocking out the shape to find out what you like the look of, even if it doesn't turn out much like the image by the end. By using this particular workflow of blocking out shapes, it gives you a very simple idea of the geometry and rough silhouette, which is important to consider before you introduce form with shading, as you want it to be pretty readable even when it's unshaded. Next, it's time to roughly block out the leaves, and if you've seen the cloud video, it's a very similar process to what I did there. Use a flat colour to scribble out the shape, then refine it, creating leaf shapes around the outline. You can do this on a different layer separate to the trunk to make it easier to adjust later on, but you don't have to. Most trees have bottom-heavy leaf trunks, meaning they're wider or more dense at the bottom, but this doesn't always apply, so again, references are handy, especially if you're not too familiar with the certain shapes that make up a given tree. For example, I'd never really drawn a wisteria tree before, so when creating this, I had lots of references up so that I could get that uneven, droopy shape looking right, and also figure out the best way to portray the appearance of the hanging flowers. Right, now that we have a fully blocked out shape, the next step is shading, and as always, it's going to be a bit tougher, as there's never really a set formula with the lighting like there are for other processes in art, and it'll probably take a lot of refining and trial and error. A large part of it is down to observation, and looking at trees in real life to determine how light acts with complex clumps of leaves. If you've got a tree with just one large cluster, such as these ones very commonly found in top-down retro RPGs, this is going to be a breeze. View the trees as a three-dimensional shape, like a sphere, and just shade it accordingly. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. You can also add these small details to make it look as if there's a few layered clumps of leaves, which I think works quite well. If you've got a tree with multiple clusters, then it's going to be a bit more challenging. Many people try to go in with the same method, but this leads to a shading style known as pillow shading, which you don't want to see. Instead, let's think about the lighting on the tree by separating it into two different ideas. The general large-scale light, which affects the whole tree, and the small-scale lighting, which is how the lighting affects each individual cluster. Let me explain. So here's an unshaded pixel tree. We can imagine this shape to be portrayed as a simple circle, for example. We can easily place a shadow on the side of this to instantly add form or three-dimensionality, and in the context of the tree, that's what I like to refer to as the large-scale lighting. Essentially, the overall gradient of shadow for the full object, as if it were one smooth ball. You can just start refining a few of one cluster like I said before, but often trees aren't structured that simply, so now imagine this shape is made of a jumbled mess of smaller clusters. The general direction of the light is still there, as you can clearly see where the light is coming from, but it's not a big smooth shadow edge because it's a little modified to show the presence of these irregular clusters. There's now multiple highlights and shadows, and it won't just be one continuous regular mass. When drawing the tree, I mostly think about the smaller scale light to get the placement of shadows on each individual cluster looking good, but you still have to consider the large scale lighting as to not end up with every cluster with a highlight. Here's a few examples just to clarify. So you can see that the clusters on the left here are the only ones with highlights but it's not really one continuous highlight, and it's broken up with areas of shadow, because you have to treat each section like an individual object. These leaves will still have shading, but will just be darker because of their placement in the tree. Anyway, that's a quick rundown of how to think about lighting for you. Remember to shade the trunk too, taking into account that the leaves will probably cast a shadow onto the trunk, as well as the roots, if they're visible, being defined with the shadow, as you can see here. Right, now that we've got to this stage, we can add a few little touches to the shading before we start refining. Because you're trying to convey something 3D, you want to add depth with your shadow colours. Consider making the leaves behind exposed bits of branch darker as a way to imply that spatial difference, or these background leaves can be contrasting these foreground ones, and so on. This just adds that extra bit of detail, which is quite nice. Alright, we've got the base, and if you've made it this far, then I'm proud of you because you've essentially done all the hard work now. Now it's just refining your blobbins for a more detailed and finished piece. The first stage of this is turning your leaf blobs into leaf shapes. Looking at real life trees is always useful for the shapes, but actually converting these images from life into pixel form, you want to simplify it. You can't squeeze every bit of minute detail into an art piece, especially at this resolution, so what artists tend to do is they give the impression of the detail by simplifying the leaf shape into something more readable, and then letting your brain fill in the gaps. 
You can go round and fluff shaped, maybe square leaves or pointed leaves or anything else you like the look of. My advice would be to not make the shape too complex since, just to reiterate, the more basic a design is, the more readable it will be, and also the easier it is to stay consistent with the design itself. Try to make all your leaves somewhat the same shape, perhaps with little differences such as the size or rotation, to give your tree that organic appearance. But as you know, leaves on a given tree are all rather similar to each other, so we want to replicate that. Right, so you've chosen the shape, and now it's time to plaster it everywhere, making all your blobby forms into much more defined structures. I find this bit quite relaxing actually, as you can kind of just go around adding the shape to everything without much thought. Just a quick note, some people like to have a leaf shaped brush which I use to refine the silhouette, but I prefer to have more control over the shape as it allows for a greater level of malleability and flexibility for me, but you might find that when getting an idea down, it helps to just have that simple leaf brush, which is why I'm putting the idea here. The final thing on leaves as you're refining is that you don't have to put them everywhere. Lots of beginners make the mistake of adding a mass of colours and noise to create leaves, but actually, if you hold back the detail in some areas, as you can see I've left some bits quite flat, it can actually be more appealing to look at. When viewing a tree in real life, your brain doesn't process every leaf on its own, but rather the whole cluster on the tree. Perhaps you can make out a few defined shapes, but most of the time it tends to all blend in, and you only really notice the full form, which is essentially what we're replicating here. Checking out other artists and seeing how they best balance readability and complexity is something I find really helpful in drawing complex shapes such as trees and foliage, and you might want to do the same too. Texturing the wood is slightly different and it's slightly more rigid as it's a different material. I mainly use these straight lines for the majority of the tree and I recommend doing some kind of pattern like this, as it does get across the shape of the material quite well. Right, you're almost done. Now we just have to add a few finishing touches. Maybe a falling leaf here or there, some grass, and also just touch up anything you feel the need to. And after that, you're basically finished. I can't see your final piece, but I'm sure it looks amazing. Oh, what's this? A Discord server? For you to share your art and talk to really nice people? In all seriousness, it would be awesome if you joined. It's a great place to meet fellow artists, game developers, and the like. And we're also thinking of hosting some pixel art challenges in the future, so yeah, look out for those. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope that you learned something from this video, and it means a lot that you watched to the end here, so thanks. And on that note, please do like and subscribe.